So, in our last lecture, we had uh, basically identified some of the requirements that need to be satisfied or, or fulfilled in order to have a pipeline version of our MIPS 32 architecture. Now, today we shall be looking into that very specifically how we can modify the non pipeline data path of the MIPS 32 that we have seen earlier into an equivalent pipeline version which works. Okay. Of course, subsequently we shall try to identify what are the problems or conflicts that can come in and how we can solve them those we shall be taking up on a case by case basis. So, we shall be continuing with our discussion on MIPS 32 pipeline fine. So, first is that we means we shall be using some conventions. Now, the conventions are like this I will try to explain. So, you see we will be using the five stages right the instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute mem and wb. Now, what I am saying is that we also require some latch stages in between some register stages. Okay. So, the convention that I am talking about is see each of these latch stages we are giving some specific names. For example, this latch stage between I f and I d we call them as I f slash I d. This latch stage we call as I d slash E x. This one as E x mem and this one as mem w b. Well, and another thing let us see in the non pipeline version if you recall in the instruction fetch stage what we are doing we were saying that there was an instruction memory this was being accessed by some address from program counter and some data was read it was loaded into a register called IR instruction register. But here what we are saying is that we need not use separate registers like these IR for example, in every stage rather in this IF ID stage itself we can earmark a portion of it. See these are registers right this consists of certain number of bits. So, we can earmark certain number of bits here which can be our IR for example. So, we can earmark certain number of bits here which can be our NPC for example. Okay. So, the idea is that we shall not be using these registers separately within the stages rather many of these registers we shall be integrating along with these latches right fine. So, let us come back to the conventions. So, this already I have mentioned I f i d i d x these are the names of the latches and the naming convention is like this. So, if I write i d slash e x dot a this means that I am referring to a register a that is implemented as part of the i d e x latch right. So, this is the naming convention that we shall be following. Okay. Let us look into the stages one by one straight away now. Now, in the instruction fetch stage one thing we mentioned that we need to increment our program counter by 4 here itself we cannot wait till mem. So, our micro operation can be like this we are doing an instruction fetch after fetching where we are storing 
we are storing into IR means IFID dot IR. IR is part of the IFID latch. Similarly, in the IFID dot NPC, there is a register NPC as part of this. Well, also there is a separate register PC, PC is a separate register, comma PC that is why I wrote. So, this is loaded with either this ALU out from EXMEM or PC equal or PC plus 4 depending on some condition. See, if it is a branch instruction and the branch condition is true, then you will have to load program counter with this EXMEM ALU out. You see, if it is a branch instruction, you have no way to know the branch target address right now in IF, you will have to wait. But if it is not a branch instruction, you can proceed. You can you can uh, proceed with doing PC equal to PC plus 4 and be ready with the next stage when the next instruction can be fetched. Okay. So, exactly we are doing that. We are making a check if it is a branch instruction and condition, then we do this. You see, this checking is not that difficult because we are already fetching it here and this opcode equal to branch means we are checking a few bits in this IR whether it is a branch condition. Of course, uh, this we are not checking here we are checking EXMEM opcode. So, later so it is not checking here. So, by default in IF we will be going to the else part PC plus 4, but if it is a branch instruction and if the condition is a branch taken branch, then something else will be loaded. This is our modification in IF. So, how does our IF stage look like now? Our IF stage will look like this, this is our IF and this is the IFID latch. So, we have a register here, this is IFID dot IR, I am just showing just IR by the side of it, actually it is here. Similarly, NPC is another register inside IFID dot NPC and PC is a separate register of course. So, PC is used to access memory and this multiplexer is selected either PC plus 4 or this ALU out which is coming from EXMEM. Right? So, by default this condition will be selecting this. So, by default PC plus 4 will be loaded. right? This is how we are making the modification in the IF stage, so that P C equal to P C plus 4 is done here itself, but if it is a branch instruction there will have to be some corrections to be made. Right. Now, for the ID stage what were the operations? We are doing some register prefetch. Now, you see in the previous one already this I R is in the I F I D. Okay. So, from there we are checking the different bits source registers and other things IMM. So, that is why IFID dot IR the RS field of that IFID dot IR the RT field of that. We are prefetching the two registers and storing them in A and B registers which are part of IDEX latch next stage latches and NPC we are not doing anything, simply we are forwarding this NPC from IFID to IDEX because this will be this will be required later. Similarly, IR we are doing the same thing, IFID we are simply forwarding it to IDEX and IMM IFID dot IR we are doing a sign extension and we are storing in IDEX dot IMM. So, so, whatever I have written here actually can be pictorially explained like this. You see in the previous IFID stage I have this NPC and IR, but in the next one IDEX I have NPC A, B, IMM, IR. So, IR I am simply copying, NPC I am simply copying, this A, B I am reading from the register bank, this IMM I am also using sign extension. So, you see 
this is exactly what you have done fetch sign extension these are simple copies and uh, these two arrows that are shown these are actually for the register write this will come from later stages here only you are showing register read but because the register bank is located in stage means stage id so the register write signal should also come here from mem wb rd and mem wb lmd or mem wb alo out okay now let's come to the ex stage now ex stage again the operation is different depending on the kind of instruction if it is register to register alu then we are doing some operation on this a and b and storing it into alu out which is part of ex mem and ir again we are forwarding to the next latch register memory alu so this is actually register immediate actually not memory so, the one is uh, register other is immediate data. So, you are means actually register memory what you are doing we are actually uh, uh, register ALU means you are just adding a register content or subtracting some operation depending on the function to an immediate data. And for load and store you will have to calculate the effective address. Hmm. So, you are forwarding it this a lu out you are calculating and for branch so again you are doing that same thing calculating the branch address and checking the condition same thing so in terms of the pipeline implementation this ex stage will look like this see here the operation may look quite complex, but in terms of hardware it is fairly simple. In the IDEX stage you had NPC, AB, IMM, IR. This IR gets copied and B gets copied, because you need B gets copied here. For some instruction you need B, it gets copied. So, B also you need to copy, but A lu out gets stored and cont gets stored. This is true for all the things you see. A lu out, A lu out, A lu out, and for this A lu out and cont. This IR and B are getting forwarded. This IR and B are getting forwarded. This is my EX stage, just an A lu, some multiplexer, and a zero condition checker. Then, when you come to the MEM stage, for A lu operation, you again simply forward IR to the next latch and also you forward alu out here because for alu instruction mem does not do anything it simply forwards it for load operation you are doing a memory read and ir is forwarded for store operation you are doing memory write and ir is forwarded so same thing you see your memory address is in ex mem alu out ex mem alu out so while reading you are storing it in lmd and while writing you are taking it from ex mem b okay so your mem stage is simply like this it consists of a memory so your address is coming from here data is coming here so for reading you read into lmd for writing it will come from b and ir is forwarded alu out is forwarded you see ir is forwarded alu out is forwarded because we will be reading these values will be requiring in the next stage that is why you have to forward this. And one thing just to recall that here this alu out and the cond signals that are generated in mem these are fed back to the if stage because here, here at this stage you have known for sure that whether it is a branch instruction or not and whether it is a condition is true or false. So, you send them to the IF stage indicating the condition of the branch instruction and what is the target address of the branch. So, that PC can be updated accordingly right fine. And lastly 
in the WB stage simply you are doing some write into the register banks depending on the register, register, RM or load instruction whatever you are doing write and you will be doing either RD or RT depending on the instruction type. And so, it is uh, fairly simple it takes the LMD and ALU out from here and IR why does it require IR now you see why this IR was forwarded because you see depending on the instruction you need these fields RD or RT because they have to be written into the register. So, these signals will have to go back to the you just go back there in that register bank you see here these signals are coming from later from the WB stage. So, the register address was coming RD or RT like here RD is shown, but it can be RT also and also the data to be written. Okay. So, here those data are being fed back to that stage ID stage and this mux it is simply a multiplexer it selects either LMD or ALU out depending on the type of instruction it is either LMD or ALU out one of them is going to be written. Okay. So, the control circuit will be selecting this multiplexer. So, putting all the things together the MIPS pipeline looks something like this. Well, this is a little complex I have tried to fit it into a slide. So, you see this is your instruction fetch well here I have shown this PC from here, but actually this can be from the output of the multiplexer also. Well, you can either do it always plus 4 you load it or you can make it as default and via multi it does not matter really. So, earlier I have shown that this connection is coming from here, but here I am showing that directly PC PC plus 4 you are doing here, but if it is a branch later it is known then from the output of the multiplex will have to make some changes. So, for that change this connection has to be taken from the output of the multiplexer. So, here I have just for simplicity I have not shown the exact connection this you remember and this is your instruction memory and this is your ID stage register bank to read and one write and sign extension. These are the this RSRT for reading and the third one for writing and this is the data to be written to the register and this is the EX stage multiplexer selects either NPC for branch instruction or A for other instruction B or sign extension for immediate operations that depends on the instruction MUX will be selecting one of the inputs okay. it goes here. So, cond is getting generated here this cond will be selecting this multiplexer. So, actually this will be fed here right data memory multiplexer. So, this is how the total MIPS 32 pipeline implementation look, looks like. So, you see it is not at all complex it is very similar to our earlier non pipeline diagram with some minor changes just this four register stages included. But what we shall now see is that we shall look at some other issues or problems those as I said are called hazards and you shall see how some of these hazards can be overcome or tackled right. So, here we are stopping here now, but now what we will be looking at just assuming that we have this base MIPS 32 pipeline available with us we shall be exploring the various hazard situations and try to come up with some solutions. So, how to solve them or how to tackle them right. So, let us stop for today in this lecture. So, we shall be continuing with the hazard detection and avoidance in our subsequent lectures.